श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात्कर ब्रह्मा तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम इको ऑफ द साउंड मीन्स आवर ओन साउंड इज रिफ्लेक्टेड एंड इट कम्स बैक टू अस exactly the same way ego also means the same thing our own life is reflected and it comes back to us like kabir ji says bura jo dekhna main chala <clears throat> when we see bad thing in this world it is nothing but our own reflection coming back to us therefore <clears throat> meditation is like looking into the mirror that is the process of meditation when we look in the mirror we do not look at the mirror and when we look in the mirror we look at ourselves so although we are seeing practically outside but we are experiencing experiencing ourselves if this is clear exactly the same way now what will be the impact on this vision so when we look into the mirror we are very happy to see ourselves whatever may be my age 19 not out all the you know muscles i have given up it is constantly shaking vibrating why you are moving your neck no this is because of meditation i have developed vibratory disease and yet we don't hate ourselves we still love because we see ourselves so what happens if we develop this vision and live in that vision what is called as living in meditation the next immediate thing that happens is we are at home with everyone in every place under every condition and every time like meditation is done only for some time half an hour meditation rest of the day frustration here we are not talking about that meditation we want to live in meditation so let us understand the steps through which we go we go through three steps in our life <coughs> first is remaining as a samsari samsari means the one who is samyak sorry who is all the time miserable so that is a samsari the person who is miserable he will only complain about everything in this world so this complaint masters this is the first stage and then his complaints cannot be sorted out so he approaches something higher who may help him see that is why in our pujas <coughs> first of all we invoke ganesh ji and ganesh ji invoke in a erika nut supari so like in the outer world when somebody is troubling us we engage the supari dealers <laughs> iski supari le lo and then that supari dealer will come and finish that person is it not exactly the same way in the religious way we invoke supari that is why ganesh ji is worship in supari <laughs> it's a very cheap deal you don't have to spend lot of money so from a samsari we become the believers 
so we believe if i do this puja god will come and help me and we do not know try karte hain see when every kind of medicine fails then we are ready to try anything when we are told do homeopathy it will help you and the homeopathy people tell very clearly there are no side effects when there are no effects how there can be side effects <laughs> because you are completely a gone case anything you are ready to practice then out of a samsari a believer is born and what the believer does he goes to this temple that temple this church that church and goes on praying his prayer is praying upon god not praying to the lord so this believer when he is born he slowly starts focusing his attention initially his problems subsequently the one who is invoked that become the point of attention it is said in the path of devotion that you give one finger in the hands of the lord he will catch hold of your wrist exactly the same way this difficult is change our attention from the world and problems to someone who will help us so out of a samsari a believer is born and then the language of the believer changes the believer says by god's grace everything is all right and there after he starts thinking he is a believer he is a devotee the real devotee is the one he who sees god's presence in every experience of life when something good has happened god's grace when something bad happens that is also god's grace when this will happen then the the believer is getting matured see like when a mango fruit is not mature it holds on to the tree of samsara but when the same fruit becomes mature it is effortlessly separated from the tree and falls apart exactly the same way initially the believer is holding on to the tree of samsara god do this thing god do that thing i will um, give you prasad sava rupaye ka prasad and what you want i want at least a lottery maybe for a few million dollars see the bargain sava rupaye mein itna because attention is only on the samsara but when his devotion starts becoming mature then samsar becomes secondary now his attention is on his own self when the attention is drawn on the self now this believer is further evolved to the state of a seeker this journey from samsari to seeker why are a believer this journey is called as practice of meditation see normally for us meditation is what military drill he did this manner don't look here and there now don't think you don't think you may say but we keep on thinking see friends we have to mature in our understanding and when a seeker is born now his questions quality changes his expressions changes change like a samsari his expression is he is miserable because of others a believer his statements are all that is happening is by god's grace see the difference and then when a seeker is born and his attention is to whom it is happening who is miserable see 
This change in the expressions of life is the process of meditation. See friends. So when we have come to the stage of seeker, then we stop complaining and we start inquiring. Now this inquiry is again of few different types. <coughs> the inquiry is one inquiry is cause and effect. Why this happens? Now this cause and effect, if you further analyze, you will come to know like you know, this um, disease organism produces this disease. So the organism is the cause, the disease is the effect, cause and effect. Now in this, if you take care of the cause, the effect, the disease is taken care of. One type of cause and effect relationship. Second type. Gold is the cause and ornaments are the effects. Now what is the difference between these two relationships, cause and effect? The main effect will be in case of the disease germ and the disease, this relationship will make us extrovert. Because our attention is on the disease and attention will be on the cause. They will take us away from ourselves. When our attention is on cause, the gold and effect the ornaments, so what will happen? When we will look at the ornaments, we will not be carried away by the name and glitter of the ornaments. But our attention will be on the cause, the gold. So in first case, we want to get rid of the cause so that the disease is removed. In second case, we seek the cause so that the limitations of the effect are no more an issue for us. See friends. And when our attention comes on this cause, the gold, then the effects do not make any difference to us. Like in one of my friend's shop, they invited me for inauguration. And the shop was that of uh, jewellery. So people call us for inauguration of anything. One doctor, she was a gynecologist, she asked me to inaugurate. Swamiji, please inaugurate my um, clinic. I said, I am sorry, I cannot. Why? I said, I am a man, how can I deliver? No, 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 not that. <laughs> we are called for anything to inaugurate. In Jodhpur it happened many years before. I was staying in that Gita Ashram. And uh, on the third day, the trustees came, did Namaskar, Chamatkar and said, Swamiji, you are great. I said, thank you very much. Anything more? He said, no. We were having one problem for last three years. The problem is solved after you are coming here. It's very good. I never going to want to ask what is that now. There is no need. You know what happened? I said, I don't know. I don't want to know also. As long as you are happy, it's good. He said, no, but we want to tell you because of you what good thing happened. Okay, tell. He said, there was one vehicle which we wanted to get it and because of the paperwork, red tapism, Somebody donated it from other country and we do not have the certificate for receiving the foreign grants and therefore this vehicle which we have planned to get for transporting the dead bodies to the cremation ground, that vehicle has come after your arrival. <laughs> I said, do you want me to inaugurate? <laughs> Called anywhere for inauguration. So my general friend, when he called me for inauguration, at this moment, you are all in meditation. Do you remember you are a man or a woman, young or old, doctor or a patient? No. 
when you forget everything but you remain memory free experience is god realization god doesn't have memory you know what is the reason he doesn't operate through the mind if i ask you do you remember your childhood of course do you remember you what will you say i don't remember me i know myself see therefore don't carry the burden of the past no we went for that meditation camp you know i need to ask such a solid meditation like a rock when we used to sit down we near us to get up no it is not a memory it is unbroken causeless experience without an experiencer that is meditation see friends and therefore if we want to live in meditation the first thing is give up this notion of cause and effect bhagwan shankaracharya writes vishvam pashyati karya karanataya swaswami sambandhatah shishya charyataya tathaiva pitruputra adhyatmana vedatah swapne jagrati vaya esha purushah माया परिभ्रामितः तस्मै श्री गुरुमूर्तये नमः इदं श्री लक्षिणामूर्तये विश्वम कार्य कारणतया पश्यति दिस वर्ल्ड कम्स इनटू एग्जिस्ट एग्जिस्टेंस द मोमेंट कॉज एंड इफेक्ट इज एस्टैब्लिश्ड सो इफ यू वांट टू गो बियॉन्ड कॉज एंड इफेक्ट व्हाट विल बी द वे drop this funny thing called as cause and effect cause and effect is an illusion it is not real see like when we go to the doctors and the doctor doesn't ask us what disease you are suffering from no he ask us what are the symptoms you are having from the symptoms we arrive at the cause the disease so the symptoms become the cause for establishment of the disease and the disease is the cause for creating the symptoms so who is because of whom no such people who are lost in that they will be focusing attention only in giving medication like you know the medical doctor they give the painkillers what is the painkiller which kills you without pain painkiller is not a medicine which will cure you which will prevent you no see friends therefore meditation is going beyond cause and effect then the second cause and effect we saw that drop the names and the forms of the ornament and come to the cause the gold that is also cause and effect so when my friends inauguration i did the jewelry shop he asked me this question ravi ji i will not give you just for the sake of it i am asking you suppose there are two statues made up of gold one is rama second is ravana which you will take i say you think what i will take he said of course you are a swami you will take rama i said okay now listen from me which is heavy <laughs> my interest is not in your rama or the ravana my interest is in the gold so what i have done i have discarded the effect and focus attention on the cause be attentive when in this manner we focus attention on the cause then we come to know one very important principle in the cause effects appear 
but the effects cannot be without the cause. If you remove the gold from the ornaments, the ornaments cannot exist. But the gold can exist with or without ornaments. So what is the reality? The gold. Exactly the same way. Now, this is the approach which we have to follow in meditation. See. So, when we want to say, I want to do meditation, who are you? Of course, I am a man, woman, husband, wife, brother, sister, very good. Our life begins with the limitations of three things. Time, space and object. Without these three parameters, we cannot talk. When we fill in our forms, the first parameter, date of birth, that is before <coughs> that we were not there. They don't leave the blank thing, date of death, to be filled in by or for official use. Date of birth, before that I was not there. Limitation of time. Then size. What is the width and the length? So, the height is 4 feet 2 inches, width is 6 feet. Space. This much space is occupied. Then the third thing is, what is the weight? 2 tons. Right. So, time, space and objects. These are the three parameters with which our total life is lived. Now, go to your deep sleep. In deep sleep, what is our age, what is our size, and what is our weight? Nothing. Net result, we are happy. So, when we get rid of the limitations of time, space, and object, net result is we are happy. Therefore, what should be the first step in meditation? Don't start meditation as a punishment. Suppose you meditation karo. But I will sleep. No, no, you should do meditation. <coughs> then such people, they do jhatka meditation. You know that? This is one different type of meditation. When they sit like this, after some time, they do like this. What is this? Jatka meditation. Don't do that way. Therefore, meditation, first step is to get rid of the impact of time, space and object. See? Now in this, let us go step by step. First, time. We all suffer only because of excess of time. We never suffer because of shortage of time. See, have you seen the small kids going in depression? No. They don't have time to go to depression. Only like us, any time ready to get into depression. What happened to you? I don't know, I don't get interested in anything in this. Go to doctor, maybe depressed. See? What is the problem? The problem is, I have to live 24 hours a day. day. What do I do? See, the first step to get rid of this impact of time. And how do we start? Begin your day early morning in an inspired mode. You are stepping on meditation. But normally, prosperity and affluence is equal to sleeping like a pig up to 10 o'clock. And the more we can keep on sleeping, we feel we are prosperous. No. 
then we become so lazy laziness is equal to identification with the body <coughs> therefore meditation begins when you are no more a slave to your body's suggestions begin your day early morning with an inspired mood today is the only day of my life which i have to live fully not that aaj kare so kal kar kal se karenge who knows tomorrow we are there or not see and once you decide this firmly see i'm preparing you for uh, disappearing in meditation not doing meditation so if we have decided to start our day early morning naturally you will have to retire the earlier night very early so retire by about 9 o'clock no but then the late night movies and hbo or all kinds of this useless political news and then with great difficulty we go to sleep slowly we become nishachar nishayam charati yaha saha nijachara the one who is living at night and sleeping during day first step conquer this limitation of time <coughs> a total change will come second thing we have to begin our day in an inspired and a cheerful mood not like that uh, but is it compulsory to go for meditation mm. we have to remain ever cheerful inspired then third thing we are taken care of time we are taken care of object the body identification therefore body is no more a burden it is an asset not a liability most of us carry the body as a liability and therefore whole life we live for the body on everybody see now the third and the most important thing is all these things three things time space and object they are born with body identification therefore the first destination in meditation is freedom from body identification many times the sincere seekers out of ignorance for their meditation is like searching for a black rat in a dark room by a blind person where the rat is not there meditation so do you do meditation no we do not do meditation we do every day and thereafter we get very good experience sometime light sometime tabla sometime flute see friends get out of that wrong notion like if you have to use the gps <clears throat> two points are necessary first the point of origin second the destination if these two points are not specified your map cannot be drawn now point of origin is what body identification then only the samsara begins so what should be the destination of meditation destination is freedom from body identification that is all now when you are going on the way you will come across many things take left turn take right turn there is a petrol pump because there is a petrol pump that doesn't mean you have to fill in the petrol nee ba gaya to le lete are do you need it Mom, why they have kept a petrol pump if we don't need it? It is for those who are going by car. You are a baker walking. Oh, 
fuori e uoco e sono molto sì, friends, in the same manner, when you are walking the spiritual journey, you will come across many stations on the way. You will have sometimes the experience of light, sometimes the experience of this thing. That doesn't mean get lost in that. Who cares? Let them come and go. Here the thumb rule is, any experience which begins and ends is a fig of mind. We have to go beyond mind. Because the mind alone creates time, space and object. In the deep sleep, the mind is enfolded, no time, no space, no object. And who wants to die? Nobody wants to die, including the mind. So the mind starts projecting. See friends, therefore refuse to entertain any experience even if God comes and stands in front of you in meditation. Have that courage. See. Otherwise we will get lost only in those visions. And I tell you very clearly, seeing God makes no difference. Either to God or to us. You can come across many people, they call their uh, Guru as God, Bhagwan so and so. And they live with that God, not for a day or two, but 30, 40 years. They dine with that God on the same dining table and you see their personal life is disgusting. What is the use of seeing such a God which has no impact on us? See, friends, therefore don't get carried away by the vision of God. I had a vision of God. Of course, it is better than seeing a film actress. It is better. But it is only relative. It's not the truth. So, destination is very clear. Destination is freedom from body identification. Now, when we want to do any operation, what is the first thing required? The person who is to be operated must be properly secured. In one school, somewhere they took me, in their biology laboratory, class 10 or 11, and they wanted to show me the operation of the frog, some students. I said, hey, look here. Um, do it, but is it necessary for me to? Yes, Swami, our children want to demonstrate. So, on that um, tray, they had a lot of wax, and that poor frog was <coughs> sleeping on the back, Shavasan, and they fixed the uh, pins. I said, before you start, have you fixed them properly? Or is it will jump out? And when you put your scissor, it will be tickling, it will support. No, 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 don't worry. So I said, I'm not worrying, I'm asking. And as if I had to say that, and they started. And the frog was really powerful. He just jumped it, you know. So even to operate a frog, you have to secure the body of the frog in the same manner. To operate on your body, to get out of the body, your body must be properly secured. Now be attentive. Securing the body is not the goal. Okay. What after that? See friends, what you will see in most of the meditations, their achievement is, now Swamiji, I can sit for half an hour without movement. Simply sitting for half an hour without movement, if that is meditation, all our buffaloes are great meditators, they don't move. We get disturbed even by one small mosquito, and they don't get disturbed even by a truck. When a truck comes in front of the buffalo, have you seen any buffalo running, you know, in a hurry hurry out of fear? No. She looks at the truck, so what? That confidence. See, friends, therefore, let us be very clear. 
simply sitting is not meditation then we first of all secure the body so that the body is no more an issue or a problem for us and the body has to keep has to be kept in such a manner that we are not paying any attention to the body see best example i can think of is this um microphone stand what is the reason the stand is not falling because the center of gravity of this structure is such that the balance is perfectly maintained if the center of gravity is displaced it will fall exactly the same way when we are sitting where is the center of gravity of our body many times it is on one side one leg or other leg suppose it is on the one leg then that leg goes to sleep then it start giving you pain then we shift to the other leg then that start giving pain and slowly we alternatively like a idli stone going this way that way this way that way this happens only because the posture is not perfect therefore we have to make the posture in such a manner that once the body is kept on the seat of meditation we are able to get out of it without death and without going to sleep we are no more identified with the body under three conditions one is death compulsion second is sleep ignorance and third is wisdom and understanding the third we have to follow and for that the posture has to be properly understood and then practiced the posture should be such that the weight of our body must land only on the sitting bones sitting bones are those bones of the pelvic ischia bones which are touching the uh, seat the base in the center of these two bones is the perfect center of gravity of our body when the surface area increases we are likely to go to sleep so when we are sitting what is important is see that you don't take the support of your back if possible if you take support then it is easier to go to sleep so first is that second thing <coughs> now most of you are sitting all of you are sitting in the chair is perfectly all right now see that the weight of your body is lying on these two bones which are touching the seat of your chair don't sit on one side on the other side sit exactly in the center back is not touching the back of the chair then the hands ideal is that the hand may not be kept on the knees If you keep the hands on the knees your hands will pull you in front and after some time you will go to sleep or become a question mark so instead of that if you have got a chair you can rest your elbows on the arms of the chair or you can keep your uh, both palms interlocked with each other and the lower three fingers interlock index to index thumb to thumb or left palm below right palm above touching thumb to thumb which your way is normal for you put it in your lap so that the weight of the body doesn't displace the basic idea is the weight of the body should not displace then the next step is the body's ideal posture should be such which has got three qualities one quality is it should be firm at the base 
vertically the body should be steady and third body should be totally relaxed in fact the body is not relaxed it is the mind that is relaxed because in the carry bag of the mind is the pumpkin of the body so when you lift the carry bag there is no tension on the pumpkin it is on the bag exactly the same way when we are sitting the mind is not in us the body is in the mind therefore when we start relaxing the body in fact what happens the mind gives up the shape and the size of the body and therefore if you are fully relaxed the weight of your body will be felt increased on your base because your mind has dropped the shape and the size of the body then individual mind merges in the total mind then subsequently we will do it when we actually practice it so now as you are all sitting the first step is we are here by our own choice cheerfully and happily we are not here under compulsion for a punishment second thing many seekers get an element of fear when they sit so remove that element of fear we have to do this bhavana that the beloved lord and our guru maharaj is in our heart the lord protects us from within guru guides us from within the third thing third adjustment is we have to drop our total past and that is achieved by taking a position and at this moment i am mr nobody because somebody always have some past nobody has no past so if we have no past there cannot be any future therefore to block the future let us not plan anything what we will do after meditation by this the future is closed so naturally we are without past and future therefore in the present <clears throat> remaining in the present is not a choice given to us we cannot but have to live in the present and when we thus opt willfully all the tensions of the mind disappear then we don't want anything so if you observe now your body the base has become firm vertically your body has become steady now the third step will relax the body 
I will start giving instructions to your body. Don't come between our instructions and your body. Stand apart. Or else you will start asking questions. How? Your body will know it. Don't worry. So relax the head muscles. Relax forehead. Relax the eyebrows. Close the eyelids softly. Let there be no pressure on the eyeballs. Don't try to see anything. Either focus attention on zero or infinite. Relax the nose, the lips, the chin, the face, the ears. Relax the neck from all the four sides. Hang down the shoulders. We are unnecessarily holding them up. <coughs> it is here the ego sits on our shoulders. Hang them down. Relax the shoulder joints, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, wrists, palms and fingers. Relax, relax, relax. Let us take an observation. Our body is now divided in two parts. Relax and not yet relaxed. Relaxed areas have minimum muscle tone. They are almost relaxed. The weight of our arms has increased in our lap. The index and the up thumbs, they are pressing hard against each other. The rest of the body is having still muscle tone, tension, etc. Now come back to your shoulders again. Let us relax the main trunk. Relax the chest muscles. Go downward slowly and the abdomen right up to the base. Relax, relax, relax. Relax the sides from shoulder down up to the hip joints. Relax, relax. Now go to the back side of your body, starting from the neck right up to the pin bones, along the spine and the total back muscles. Relax, go downward, relax the lumbar region, relax the pelvic region. Now you will see that the weight of your body has increased on the base. Sometimes you may get, if the body is really relaxed, pulsations at the base. Because the weight has increased. Relax the hips, the hip joints, Thighs, knees, calf muscles, 
ankles, heels and toes. Relax, relax, relax. In fact, relaxation of the body means the mind has given up the shape and the size of the body. Therefore, the concept of inside and outside has become redundant. So our experience now is we are without the limitation of shape, size and the contour line of the body. Now the individual mind has merged in the total mind. This total mind is responsible for maintenance of life in any body. Let it be human beings, plants, animals. Now because the mind has given a shape, given up the shape and size of the body, so the mind has no reference to think about. Because at this moment, without body identification, we cannot be somebody. See, effortlessly, You are free from thoughts. Our mind is not sleeping because we can hear the sounds. <coughs> but the sounds do not influence us. So the experience of sound is happening, but an experiencer is not born. And therefore, no reaction. The breathing is extremely slow and shallow. So if we have drawn the body identification, then what is this experience like? What is the meaning of body-free experience?
So let us find out what is unlike the body. So body has birth, growth, modifications, death. And prior absence and posterior absence. So what it will be like remaining other than the body? That experience will be without beginning, without modification, without end. <coughs> So let us find out what is in our experience which has no beginning, middle and end. And we will agree that the space does not have beginning, middle and end. So now let, let us start playing, not doing. Let us start playing space, space. And what it is like being space? Space supports all the shapes and forms but doesn't get influenced by anyone. So what will be meditation? An unopposed existence. Second point, when things are added in this infinite space, there is no burden. When the things are destroyed, there is no loss. Is it not our experience? Childhood has come and gone. When childhood came, it was not a gain. When childhood disappeared, it is not a loss. Then the teenage came, not a gain. Teenage lost, not a loss. Similarly, Old age has come, it will go. We are the same. And this is not achievement. This is the recognition of our own essential nature. It is like the wife remembering that first she is a woman, then the wife. The husband remembering first he is a man, then the husband. In the same manner. Living in meditation means we know, not remember, we know we are essentially divine, but 
with body identification, we become many. When the worldly objects, Shabda, Sparsha, Parasakanda, do not add or take away anything from me, so the presence or absence of things and beings. He is equal for me. Thus, living in equanimity in the waking world, under all conditions, times and places, is living in meditation. This meditation is like going to a gym. It is not like going to a hospital to solve the unhealthy conditions of body. Many of us mistake Meditation for peace of mind, meditation for memory, this is wrong. So we live as space. Body has the shape and form, therefore subject to modification and destruction. Space doesn't have the shape and the form. Therefore, not subject to destruction.
And this is our experience. Neither we change nor we are born nor do we die. Take deeper breath slowly three, four times and while doing this observe how the body is included in the mind. Move your toes and fingers and see now the concept that I am inside the body and the world is outside has become real and the samsara begins. So, although living in a body, yet not getting influenced by the limitations of the body is living in meditation. Every one of us can achieve it. It's the same thing for all. Like the deep sleep is common for everyone in the same manner. This meditation is not separate from person to person. Offer everything at the feet of the Lord. Don't make any memory on this. Otherwise, next time again you will want to repeat it. Meditations are not repeated because the infinite cannot be repeated. The finite alone is repeated. Om Purna Badaha Purna Midam Purna Hat Purna Mudashate Purna Sya Purna Madaya 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ